In this video I'm going to show you how to run a moderation analysis in a full structural equation modeling, that is, a latent interaction. For this we will be using the double mean centering method and the analysis is conducted with Levan. First I explain the principles of double mean centering and then I will show you how to implement it with Levan. If you want to test a moderation with regression analysis, then you include the independent variable, the moderator and the interaction. In an SEM context it's basically the same, just that now we use latent construct and not measured variables. So here we have a latent independent variable, a latent moderator and a latent interaction. In SEM we have measurement models, estimating our latent variables. The key question is, how do we measure a latent interaction? There are several different approaches for that. Here I will show you the approach of double mean centering. In double mean centering we take the indicators of the independent variable and the moderator and center them. Then we calculate interaction based on those centered values and as a third step we again center those interactions. We start with our indicators and center them. Second step we calculate the interactions and third step we center those interactions. So in the end we have centered interactions of centered indicators. So this would be our model. Of course this is a very simple model where we just run a latent interaction but this could be part of a much larger model with additional variables. But to understand the principles of running moderation analyses in full SEM I think it's best to start with a very simple model. Those are the double mean centered product terms but there's one element still missing. We need error covariances. The reason behind that is those interaction terms share components, that is indicators for the independent variable or for the moderator. For instance those first three indicators are all based on the variable independent variable 1 and for that reason we should model error covariances between those three. Each product term could covary with other product terms it shares an indicator with. Let me give you an example. Let's take the double mean centered product term independent variable 1 moderator 1. This covaries with independent variable 1 moderator 2 and independent variable 1 moderator 3 because those three have in common the component independent variable 1. But it also possibly covaries with independent variable 2 moderator 1 and independent variable 3 moderator 1 because here moderator 1 is the thing all three indicators have in common. There are two additional aspects you have to keep in mind. The first is model fit. For some technical reasons the chi-square test and the fit indices in a model with a latent interaction can be seriously biased. That has something to do with nominal and actual degrees of freedom. The recommendation in the literature is that you evaluate the model fit in a model without the interaction. So we shouldn't evaluate the model fit of this model but instead of this model. The second thing, what do you do if you have many indicators for the independent variable and the moderator? Just an example, let's say you have 10 indicators for the independent variable and 6 indicators for the moderator, then you would need 60 interaction terms and above that a crazy number of possible error covariances between those interaction terms. A possible solution for that is item parceling. And there you combine two or more items to item parcels, thereby in this case reducing the number of indicators. If you want to know more about that technique, I've put in one reference to a good journal article in the description of this video. In the description you will also find journal articles about double mean centering and you will find a link to a companion web page where you can copy the complete R code I will be showing you later on. So let's start with R. First we load our packages, Levan, and for the double mean centering and later on for simple slopes, SEM tools. Here's our data frame, three indicators for the independent variable, three indicators for the moderator, 
and three indicators for the dependent variable. As I told you earlier, for the model fit, we should look at the model without the interaction. That would be this model. So, and in general, for structural equation modeling, we could use the two-step approach, where as a first step, we only look at the measurement models. That would be this code here. And in a second step, if the measurement model works, we would look at the structural model. Here I use a robust estimator, but that's not strictly necessary for this method. Here's our robust chi-square test. Not significant, that looks good. Here the robust CFI, and here robust RMSEA and robust SRMR. They all look very good, so model fit is okay. And as a measure of local fit, I've checked whether there are any modification indices above 10. There are none, so here we have a good model fit. The second step, checking the structural model, that is now including our regression without the interaction. I won't be running this because in this case it's not necessary. This structural model is just identified, so the fit of this model will be exactly the same as the fit of the CFA I ran earlier. So in this case it's not necessary, but if you test a much more complicated model where you have a positive number of degrees of freedom for your structural part, then you would have to test the second step. Now let's go to the double mean centering. For this we use the function int prod, indicators for products, based on the SAMTools package. We put in our data, we put in a vector with the indicators for our independent variable, we put in a second vector with the indicators for our moderator, match false, mean c true, residual c false, double mc true. Here are our results. Now we have nine double mean centered indicator variables. If you'd prefer to do this process by hand without this function in prod, that would be possible too. Here's the code. First mean centering, then the product terms based on those mean centered values, and then a second mean centering. I won't run this now because we get exactly the same results. You can look at the code and use it if you want on the companion web page. So now we have our double mean centered indicator variables for our latent interaction and we can run our moderation model. Here is the measurement part and the interaction is measured with our nine double mean centered product terms. Here is the very simple regression part, which is basically the same as in a moderated regression analysis. And here are the error covariances. Let's run this. As I remarked earlier, we can't really use the chi-square test and the fit indices. Nevertheless, if the p-value gets massively worse than in our model above without the interaction we used to check the model fit, then that could be an indication that we have made a mistake, especially when it comes to the error covariances. Here are the covariances. As an additional check, I would count those. If you have three indicators for the independent variable and three indicators for the moderator, then there must be 18 covariances here. If there are less than 18, you've made a mistake with the error covariances. The standardized loadings are okay. They are extremely high here. The reason for that is that this is a simulated data set. In most situations, you won't get loadings that high with real life data. The key part of the output is here, the regressions. Here are the regression weights for our latent variables. And for our moderation hypothesis, the key values are here. We have a significant negative interaction. For higher values of the moderator, the effect from the independent variable on the dependent variable decreases, or in this case gets more negative. With a significant interaction, we would like to look at simple slopes. We can do this here too, with this function, again from the SAMTools package. Here we put in the fit object for our SEM model, then a vector with the names for the independent variable, the moderator and the interaction. And it's important, the interaction has to be in the third place here. Then the name of the dependent variable and then the name of the moderator. And the last information we have to put in 
a vector with the different values for the moderator for which we want to have simple slopes. Since there is mean centering, zero is the mean and normally we want to have one standard deviation below the mean and one standard deviation above the mean. So where do those values come from? Here are the estimated variances and here is the variance of the moderator and the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So this here is minus one standard deviation of the moderator and this value here is plus one standard deviation of the moderator. Here are the results. For low values of the moderator we don't have a significant effect from the independent variable on the dependent variable but for medium and high values of the moderator we have significant negative effects from the independent variable on the dependent variable. In addition we could plot those simple slopes with this function. Here we put in the result of our simple slope analysis and here we put in a vector with a range of values for the latent independent variable for which we want to have the simple slopes. And here is our figure with the simple slopes, that is with the conditional effects of our latent independent variable on our latent dependent variable for different values of our latent moderator. That's it for moderation analysis with SEM and Lavan and R. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button below this video. Thank you so much for watching.